Good morning, good day to everyone and especially to the Asian region in the world. We would like to warmly welcome you to the first edition of the Changing Transport Showtime at the fourth edition of the Transport and Climate Change Week in 2021. We are delighted to be here at 8 a.m. in Berlin time. Uh, from this moment on, we will start transmitting the Changing Transport Showtime. It's an open space that will take place uh, from Tuesday to Thursday, one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon. That is at 8 a.m. Berlin time in the morning and uh, uh, 3 p.m. Berlin time in the afternoon to accommodate for the different time regions um, and for the participants that come from all over the world to participate in Transport Week. My name is Nadja Tega and I'm a junior advisor for Transport and Climate Change. And I'm here with my colleague, Ernesto Feilbogen, who works as a project ma uh, manager in the areas of urban mobility and energy. We will be coordinating this Changing Transport Showtime. We will be leading you through the week. Uh, we will try to link all the events that we have from the different regions, like from Asia to Europe to Africa to Latin America, and make a round package of it using the Changing Transport Showtime. And of course, we will try to make it as enjoyable as it gets for you. So, Ernesto, can you tell us more? Good morning, Nadia. Of course, good morning, all the friends that accompany us from different countries in this virtual effort to once more being all together in this Transport and Climate Change Week. I'm very happy to be part and honored to be part of this team that support the event. But let's go to a formal presentation. The Transport and Climate Change Week is organized by the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, GIZ, on behalf of the Federal Ministry of the Environment, Nature, Conservation, and Nuclear Safety, the BMU, and is financed by the International Climate Initiative, the ICI Initiative. This fourth edition will be held hybrid, that means presential, virtual, when possible, any of them, and we will have five days. The first day was yesterday, we are starting the second day of the week, and we will have 20 hubs that will be spread in 20 countries as well, and we will be covering 13 time zones. When it is possible, we will have sharing a, a presentation for all the region, and when not, every area will have their own agenda. We can say that it is a 100% greenhouse gas emission offset. Perfect, thank you so much. And uh, as a further information to you, we will try to structure the transport week according to the avoid, shift, improve approach. That will mean that, to, uh, that today we will dedicate the day to trying to avoid unnecessary uh, traveling or that is unnecessary motorized traveling. We would really like to urge you to think about how you are contributing uh, with your behavior to maybe reduce motorized travel. Are you maybe taking uh, the bike to go to work if that is possible? Are you even walking? or you're taking public transport. So that is what we will dedicate the day of today. Um, and then tomorrow, on Wednesday, we will look at uh, how to shift transport modes. How can we shift to low carbon modes of transport? That is from using maybe one car with one person to maybe uh, using um, um, a, a electric car, for example, or just changing the mode uh, um, after all. So how are you contributing to this? Take, uh, keep this question in mind and uh, think about the climate-friendly modes of transport that you maybe have at your disposal. And then on Thursday, on the 24th of June, we will look at uh, improving the efficiency of transport and the vehicles that we are using. So um, that is about the, the vehicle efficiency, that is also about the efficiency of fuels. So this is the question, those questions we would like to pose to you, they are supposed to guide you through the days. And then... <coughs> We have the, the changing transport show time, right? So here, as we said before, we have country inputs from all over the world. We have uh, 20 presentations, 20 videos from participating partners uh, that we will show you over the next three days. And we have contributions, of course, also from the private sector, from NGOs and research. So we will have guests here, live and virtually, and we will have pre-recorded videos. Um, as we said before, we want to present uh, perspectives and the different activities and also want to give you the chance of participating in the event. So we made up 
some interactive features. We will have the poll of the day in the Changing Transport Showtime. We will ask you a question in the morning um, or at the beginning of the showtime and at the end of the showtime we'll take a look at the results. Um, so you can uh, enter the poll, you can access it if you check um, the, the tab that says poll right next to the live stream that you're watching. If you click there on poll, you see that here on the slide, I think, you will find um, a, a button that says changing transport, changing transport showtime actually. You click on it and for today you will find the following question with a couple of answer possibilities for you. And we are just interested, like to just kick it off, it's a very simple question. What uh, mode of transport did you use to get to work? I personally, I walked, and I think Ernesto, you did too, right? We're lucky, it's not that far from the studio. Um, and now we are interested in hearing how our uh, mastermind behind the Transport and Climate Change Week, Mr. Daniel Bongard, made his way here. We are excited to greet him today in the Changing Transport Showtime. We're waiting for him to arrive. Who knows what mode it, uh, he used <laughs> to enter the stage. We will let me mention something. Let's put this in perspective. We are working three days in the show time, an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, receiving country contribution, input from companies. We need to coordinate a virtual, a virtual effort, and that create challenge for both sides. In our side, we need to coordinate pre-recorded presentations. Some cases we have live performance, panel discussions, and of course, what is more important, your contribution. We are hoping to receive your contribution. Please feel free to use the channel of the chat because this will be the easiest way to, that we can interact. Of course, we will face problems. Oh my God, it is home, uh, home time and I, the, I need to have a break. Internet is not working. I cannot hear you. Let us take it easy. We will solve all the problem and reward the effort, the enthusiasm to be all together working and sharing the knowledge. Thank you very much, Ernesto. Um, yeah, we are, as you said, we are rewarding your interactions, your efforts, um, and we really want to make sure that you are a part of the Transport Week and the Changing Transport Showtime. So I want to once more emphasize that we have this great platform where we have all those features waiting for you. So the poll, as I mentioned, the poll of the day, we will have in the coming days also quizzes there as part of the Changing Transport Showtime. Um, and we have, as always, we have the wall of ideas where you can share your perspectives, your contributions, whatever comes to mind, you can share that on the wall of ideas. It's a bit like a Facebook wall where you can um, interact, you can like and comment on other people's uh, thoughts and, and posts. And um, we would uh, like to encourage you to make use of that. And apart from that, of course, there's also a feedback survey available throughout the whole week uh, that will be open until Friday uh, where you can post your feedback, you can let us know what you think about this year's very, very special Transport and Climate Change Week. How do you like the hybrid uh, formats? Um, do you have ideas for improvement? Are you already eagerly awaiting the next Transport and Climate Change Week that will hopefully happen in presence again? Or maybe you uh, even prefer this hybrid format. So we're really waiting for your feedback, uh, for your interactions. Let us know what you think. Communicate with us in the chat. We will try to answer all questions that you post. They're always in the next show time. So if you have a question to our speakers today, uh, po post them there and we will try to answer them uh, tomorrow morning in the next show time. And, um, well, if you are uh, absolutely excited about the Showtime, if you're a big fan, then you can, of course, also tune in in the afternoon. And Nesta and I, we're excited to welcome you at 3 p.m. Berlin time uh, in the afternoon and talk a little bit more about um, how we change transport. And now I'd like to welcome Mr. Daniel Bongard on the stage. Um, and we will look at uh, yesterday and today. Welcome, Daniel. Good morning. Good morning, Nadia. Good morning, Ernesto. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, very well. Very fresh and early. Very nice. Um, we had this first question that we asked the audience about uh, how you got to work or where, from where you watch uh, the, the transport week from. How is that the case for you? What, are you, what mode are you using today? Uh, I was walking from the hotel over here to the studio. <laughs> To block. <laughs> that was a trick question. I knew that, but um, thank you. Um, so, 
Well, yesterday was the first day, right, of the, of the Transport and Climate Change Week. And we have here this graphic recording uh, that we had um, made yesterday. So we tried to have um, somebody cover and record all the things that happened yesterday for in, from Asia to Europe and then coming to Latin America and make this rememberable and... Um, yeah, just record whatever happens. And we would like to ask you, Daniel, what, like, what was your highlights? What, if you look at this, what will you remember most maybe from yesterday? Yeah, so uh, one uh, point that we had was, uh, for example, uh, the minister from India, yeah, who announced very progressive and aggressive uh, electric mobility policies. And I think that's really... Uh, a great effort uh, that the uh, that the country is uh, pushing forward. Uh, yeah, such an aggressive policy. Um. <clears throat> I have so I've brought some other highlights. Uh, furthermore, <laughs> Please. I think in general we have uh, heard from different people. Uh, so we traveled all around the world yeah, in the uh, World Cafe, Cafe. and. Basically, we have uh, heard uh, colleagues talking about the COVID crisis and how they uh, yeah, managed and w this challenge. And uh, secondly, people were talking about digitalization of transport. And thirdly, uh, people were talking about the climate crisis and how to tackle climate. So for example, uh, in the morning in Georgia, uh, climate change issues were put up uh, quite prominently. From Indonesia, we heard uh, how the COVID crisis affected the public transport systems. I think it was really an interesting uh, trip around the world. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, something that uh, I found very interesting was the controversy. What did you think? The controversy that we had in the afternoon, uh, this mock debate about uh, whether digitalization drives sustainable transport. Would you have thought uh, that that would be the outcome? The winning team would be the one that is actually opposing this idea? So that was certainly a highlight. Uh, so, and the, the format of the mock debate is really something that, uh, yeah, is creating quite a lot of fun. And I, I think you saw it in the smiling faces of the people when they were uh, battling with each other. Uh, so that uh, it's an interesting exercise just to, to train yourself. What is your argument? And I think uh, they had a very smart, uh, broad, uh, very smart things forward and pointed uh, the finger into some challenges. And uh, maybe this is why some people changed their mind in the second poll. Yeah, they did, definitely did a great job. And we need to consider that those teams were assigned randomly. That was not even maybe their real opinion, but they just managed to convince you even so. They I told me it wasn't their real opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're giving away the secret. Well, um, is there more that you want to share with us from yesterday? Or should we take a look at today already? Yes, one thing maybe uh, yesterday at the conference day, uh, we really had uh, quite some insights from Germany. And uh, so the Federal Ministry of Environment as a host uh, is very proud yeah, to have the transport week and have so many participants coming uh, now virtually this time to Germany and joining the discussion with us. And there have been some insights from Germany. For example, uh, one was uh, that uh, the president of the Environmental Protection Agency uh, explained how Germany is, uh, uh, reducing re is planning to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But uh, so then we had the um, board member uh, of German Railways explaining how the freight sector is tackled. And then last but not least, we had uh, uh, the launch of this uh, brochure, Future Ahoy, that is describing the German transport transformation in new ways, a comic. And uh, yeah, basically that was a very different perspectives on that topic. Thank you very, very much, Daniel. I think that is a great uh, transition to actually the outlook of the day because we will have, um, we will have a, the launch again of the Future Ahoy publication uh, this afternoon. So uh, the, the, that was, yesterday was the conference day. We really had a great start into the Transport and Climate Change Week, I think. And um, today we will have many more activities. But first, we uh, will continue with the Changing Transport Showtime. Thank you so much for being here.
Um, so we will start with the first uh, country presentation. Ernesto, do you remember what that is about? Uh, this is Albania. Yes, and we will have close to four or five minutes presentation of Albania. Uh, we have colleagues of GIZ working there, the Sustainable Urban Transport in Tirana. They are working on city level with the municipality of Tirana from direct positive change for everybody who use the bus, bicycle or walk. Modernizing the transport system to align the European Union standards and flight climate change. We invite you to share with us this video and we make some comment in the transition minute we have afterwards. Time is going well. Welcome to Tirana, the center of the cultural, political and economic life in Albania. With housing almost one million inhabitants, the city is responsible for 40% of Albania's GDP and hosts the leading universities, museums and state institutions, including the parliament. Tirana is a dense and diverse city, with 80% of the people living within a three kilometers radius from the city center, making Tirana a perfect city for walking and cycling. Every day, a third of all trips in Tirana are made on foot. The public transport system relies exclusively on buses. Meanwhile, cycling is becoming more and more common due to recent investments in cycling infrastructure. Since the fall of communism in the 1990s, Albania and Tirana have seen a drastic increase in the number of private cars. Today, there is almost one car for every five citizens. This car orientation has resulted in severe traffic jams, slow journey times in buses, road safety concerns, and increasing local air pollution. In Albania today, transport is also responsible for 80% of carbon dioxide emissions. The government has recognized these issues and is implementing measures to transform Tirana into a people-centered, modern, sustainable, and enjoyable European capital. Before 2020, Tirana, like many other cities, used to receive a lot of visitors. We would have thousands and thousands of visitors every day who were attracted by the beautiful city, the vibe, the energy, and altogether the life that we had in here. But of course, during 2020, we had plenty of time to absorb what the city had become. And what it had become was a place where people wanted to live in a balance and in harmony with their surroundings. That meant we had to reconceptualize streets so there would be more walking space. Uh, we would take the space away from cars who were parked on street and turn those into biking lanes and altogether have a more harmonized uh, livelihood with everybody being involved and deciding that space was for everyone, not just for the drivers, So I guess that was a little bit doomed to happen. Um, you know, this is a big experiment. Uh, we mentioned it will happen. Yeah, I think we, we even told you this is going to happen. So what happened now was that the, um, that the first video that we wanted to show you, the country presentation of Albania, um, is, is stopped right now. Uh, we will try to figure it out. We will make sure that we will show you the, uh, the video. But at I have some, some point. highlights to share with you. Meanwhile, the video is restarting. Public transport relies only on buses. This is amazing. But the good news is that cycling is coming. There are, uh, of course, there are a lot of effects of congestion because of the increase on private cars. Uh, later on, they mentioned that Tirana aims to become, become more people-friendly through reconceptualization of streets. Streets are for everyone, not just car. We can close a nice sentence. Only a sustainable city will be a prosperous city. And of course, they invite us to see it personally. We need to visit the city. Meanwhile, so we can see if the video comes or we continue. We on go later on. on, I think, um, Thank you. Um, 
thank you, Ernesto, for wrapping this up. Uh, make sure, well, make sure to watch the presentation. We will put it online, I think. And of course, make sure uh, to visit Tirana, like they invited us to do. Um, we will now move on to our uh, next contribution. That is uh, from, we will have Mr. Vipul Tabrani here. He's the uh, senior consultant or senior lead on uh, smart cities at Deutsche Bahn. Uh, we're very excited to have him here. This is also going to be live. So uh, please, everyone, fingers crossed that uh, this will work out. And um, Mr. Tobrani, Vipul, you will tell us a little bit about smart cities uh, solutions that the Deutsche Bahn uh, comes up with to, uh, for uh, the future of mobility. Vipul, are you there? Are uh, you with good us? morning, everyone. Good I'm morning. Morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah, hear you, you can very hear well. Right, We're excited for your presentation. Uh, me, me too. I know it's just five minutes. So I'm going to get it done really quickly. I'll try at least. Um, so good morning to all, all of you. Uh, I see a big picture of myself and not the slides. So could you bring that in, please? Yes, we will bring in the slides. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so thanks, Nadia, for the invitation. Thanks to GIZ as well. Um, what, what, what I'm going to try and do today is just give a very quick overview of what we as a DB uh, believe in mobility transformation and what are the sort of initiatives that we're doing. Um, first of all, I'd just like to begin with a small set of challenges. I think they are well known now. Um, basically for us, the biggest challenge in, in cities in Germany and also abroad as, as where we are located is motorized transport. And we as public transport company or mobility company per se are trying to uh, to conduct a sort of transformation by providing solutions that are more relevant to city mobility or in general mobility in, in a whole. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. So, uh, of course, we are a train. We began as a train company, so we, have, we are running about five and a half thousand train stations around uh, Germany. And for us, it is very important to then use train stations and use the uh, and use urban design as a means to to bring together city landscapes with mobility. Train stations don't have to just be uh, and a place where you change public transport, but rather where people live, where people experience life. So if we move to the next slide, I'll come to that. The next slide, please. Okay, yeah. So, uh, so when when we when we when we looked at the train station, we realized one of the most important things that we need to uh, figure out is how why would how would people find it more comfortable to be there? How would you? What sort of uh, services does the train station need to provide to make people feel comfortable? To make people feel like they they belong there? So, as part of the, this entire urban design and design thinking approach, we came across, we came up with about five or six different solutions, based on uh, based on proper data driven uh, ideologies. So, first of all, uh, we, 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 what we've seen in the past year, as as the pandemic came along, and it was before that already, is we start ordering more and more packages online. So, the amount of city transport that is being gridlocked by just transport delivery is is quite incredible. So for us, the idea was, can we apply smart locker technologies in our stations where we have space anyway, to and, and be uh, operate neutral, and that way provide for people to just go and collect their packets themselves when they're back from work or when they're on the way to somewhere, etc. Similarly, the idea of places, uh, to make stations greener, to make stations more uh, more customer friendly. Uh, the, the the question about co-working, I'll just come to right in in the next slide. And finally, the the idea of uh, oh, you could just go back a little bit. Uh, the the idea of uh, integration of uh, of transport. So like we have, well like we have written there, on demand shuttle shuttle services from and away from the station. So next slide, please. For for co-working spaces, what we what we've done is uh, we realized stations are an ideal place where people can work and move and be very flexible in their travels. So we create an application. We're trying to integrate more and more stations. There have been multiple pilot projects anyway, and uh, the idea is this is going to be rolled out in the in the rest of Germany. Uh, so if anyone in Germany, please go and use EveryWorks. Uh, 
have only good uh, good things to say about this. Next slide, please. Um, I think one one of the challenges with uh, integration of mobility transport is the number of different mobility modes that are available, and at the same time, mobility different mobility providers. What what we decided was yes, we are one of we are one of the many mobility providers around the country or around the, in the world as well. It would be very 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 interesting for us and uh, much more comfortable for the end user to have one service fits all. Uh, as a, uh, to to create a platform as a service to integrate uh, different mobility services. So Mobimeo is a 100% DB company that has been working on a white label solution or is providing white label solution to various German uh, German companies or German operators. And uh, we, are, we are hoping to roll this out, uh, or roll this idea out as well. The next slide, please. Similarly, IOKI, uh, as, as IOKI, is basically uh, is an on-demand uh, mobility platform, uh, which is one of the European leaders right now in terms of uh, connecting on-demand mobility with public transport. Now, interestingly, uh, this is very... Uh, so IOKI is one of the probably one of the world leaders when it comes to mobility uh, analytics. And one, one of the interesting things we found out is public transport doesn't have to be exist everywhere. Or rather, I would rephrase and say, public transport can be thought anew. There are, there are different ways of looking at public transport. And this is one on demand, public transport is one of the one of the futures that we are going to, uh, that we are going to be uh, evolving it towards. The next slide, please. Vipul, I, I want to come in here. Thank you so much. Uh, we are running a little bit out of time. Maybe you take oh. another 50 seconds and come to an end. Yeah, I think that was pretty much where I was trying to go to. OK, um, yes, yeah, so I think this is pretty much my second last slide or this last slide. So uh, we as uh, DB, uh, as Deutsche Bahn, the DB Eco Group, we are pretty much existing all over the world and we are helping companies, uh, transport companies, ministries, as well as multiple different organizations in promoting different uh, new modes of transport, promoting uh, mob the mobility transformation towards rail and otherwise. So I've just shown you four uh, examples of what we're doing right now or what we've done in the past. And these are locations that we are that we are focusing on. So if you have any questions, please come, please reach out to me at any time. I'm quite certain uh, I'll be help, able to help you out. That was it. Thank you so much. That was perfect timing. Thank you so much, Vipu. That was really interesting. And I would really love to ask you a bunch of questions. Unfortunately, we are uh, out of time and have to move on to the next contribution. But uh, thank uh, you. Absolutely. Thank you thank so, you so, so much. much for being here. You uh, have the honor of having been our first live guest uh, in the Changing Transport Showtime, a part, of course, from Daniel, who will uh, be with us every day. So uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and um, let's move on to the next. Uh... Yes, but we need to tell the colleagues, but don't feel a worry if you could not follow the presentation. Any country input, any company input will be in the mobility movie area in the platform. So feel free to get all the information there. And now, I think it's time to, to see the video from India. It is going to be, again, a five-minute video, and we will share some information there and make some comment afterward. Please, the video from India. At COP21, India had pledged to reduce its carbon footprint by 33 to 35 percent by 2030, below 2005 levels. It has also pledged to increase the share of non-fossil fuel-based electricity to 40% by 2030. Spanning over 5.89 million kilometers, it is the second largest road network in the world. Over 64% of the country's goods and over 90% of passengers are transported by road. At nearly 15% of energy-related CO2 emissions, Road transport is one of the fastest growing emission sectors in India. If the present trends continue, vehicular energy and greenhouse gas emissions will triple by mid-century. Electrification, efficiency improvements, 
fuel diversification, mode shift to public transport, and transport demand management. Most cities in India are at an initial stage of development. This presents a great opportunity to leapfrog towards decarbonizing the transport system. We are the largest manufacturers of two-wheelers and the fourth largest car manufacturer in the world. Indian auto manufacturers produced a record 30.92 million motor vehicles in 2019, including 4.03 million passenger vehicles. India's transport sector with the fourth largest rail network in the world and the third largest global aviation market presents a huge and a massive opportunity, but there are also challenges. The aim is to implement sustainable transport and limit future emissions. If this is done properly, Indian cities will not need big and expensive upgrades in the future. But it needs an integrated approach bringing in multiple agencies on a common platform. Now globally, three-fourths of total transport emission comes from road transport sector. And that share in India is as high as 90%. Because in Delhi, for example, uh, 40% of PM2.5 emissions, 20% of PM10 emissions, and almost 80% of VOC emission comes from transport. Therefore, transport is also important for climate change as it is equally important for public. Between 1981 and 2011, that's again a period of 30 years, while we had a 77% increase in our population, our number of motor vehicles went up by 2,500%. That's the magnitude of motorization that is taking place, and that's why transport sector is going to contribute an increasing amount of the greenhouse gas emissions in India. That's why dealing with climate change in India, transport is going to be absolutely critical. Transport and highways are in the forefront of driving sustainable mobility in India and this opens vast challenges and opportunities to explore and work along with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. We run the national mission of transformative mobility which is housed at Niti.io. We have, the government has released a phase two with an outlay of 10,000 crores. We incentivize over a million electric two-wheelers, half a million electric three-wheelers, and four-wheelers, and a lot of buses. Uh, we have also taken several proactive steps uh, to push electric vehicle mobility. India would be the primary driver of e-mobility, where 30% EV penetration would happen by 2030, and India would have 35% shared miles by 2030. And therefore, the future of transport lies in shared, connected and autonomous mobility. For passenger transport, the expected growth is due to a growing population and also by rising income levels. For instance, car ownership rates in India will increase as the middle class is growing and projections expect a fourfold increase of passenger transport activity until 2050. A similar growth is expected for the freight transport sector as the Indian industry is expanding. Freight will continues to play an important role in India and is more energy efficient than transporting freight on trucks. Transformation is going on in India for both transport as well as energy sectors. Focus is on green energy for clean transport. In this context, electric mobility in India is opening up a window of opportunity for sustainable sector coupling. Smart charging, vehicle to grid, dynamic integration with renewable energy, these are a few key areas where synergistic sector coupling between transport and energy will be enhanced soon in India. Solutions from India can become a unique model for the region and beyond, contributing to knowledge, dissemination and learning, leading to a solution-based approach to the threat of global warming and climate change. the contribution of India, they start sharing some interesting figures related with the NDC ambitions, but they said that without any action, uh, greenhouse gas emission from transport will triple by middle century. In the last 30 years, those are very interesting figures, the, the period that ended in, 2000, in 2011, 
2,500% increase in the number of motorbikes. At the same time, 77 population increase. This is massive motorization, and the idea is, of course, it will continue growing. But there are some other important figures related with e-mobility. Hmm? They have a plan for 2030, 30% of the electric bicycle penetration and 35% in share mile, combined with renewable ener energy that it is the energy coupling, coupling energy and transport. And there is a bigger framework. It's not only transport located there, but they see from the outside, and they include energy efficiency improvement, public transport, fuel diversification, transport demand, management as well. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much, Ernesto, also for this short uh, recap. We will now come uh, to the next contribution that is of the Agence Française de Développement. We uh, talk to Suzanne Spooner. She is the project manager at the Transport and Mobility Division there and will tell us a little bit about a project uh, they did in Teresina in Brazil. Hello, everyone. My name is Suzanne Spooner from the French Development Agency Transport and Mobility Division. Thank you for the invitation in the Transport Week. I will be presenting a project that we are implementing in Teresina, Brazil, based on the use of data to improve public um, transportation services in this city. We believe in AFD that is, it is key to encourage technolog technological and digital innovation in the mobility sector, and that in the developing world, digital solutions are key to answer to the transport challenges uh, because uh, the mobility needs are very important more than elsewhere and they require new solutions that are effective, affordable and rapidly actionable. So the Teresina project is supported by the Euroclima program, so this European Union regional program that concerns 18 countries in Latin America based on supporting mitigation and adaptation strategies and at the, in the mobility sector, uh, supporting the, the development of national urban mobility policies and integrating multi multimodal planning at the city level. So the Brazilian city of Teresina is located in the northeast of the country and um, the objective of the project was to provide a quick assessment of Teresina current public transport system, identify the main problems faced by the city of Teresina and launch an open, open innovation process helping to answer to the identified challenges. What were the main challenges that were identified? in the city of Teresina. One concerned the quality of the service. So lack of safety on buses, station and surroundings, lack of punctuality, among other. The second key problem concerned monitoring and planning of transport systems. So lack of real-time data, lack of indicators for decision making, and in general, lack of information on the efficiency of transport services. And the third key challenge is concerned the operation and is based, for example, on vehicle overcrowded or the problems of maintenance of buses and, sta and station. So the challenge was launching this open innovation process. So this was done through CISTRA, that is in charge of this, uh, all this consultancy. And we had more than 150 participants that participate to different workshops. Then we arrived to a group of 10 proposals that presented the, the solutions to a jury. And we selected three uh, solutions that will be prototyped. And they have until October to develop the proof of concepts. And then one of these free proof of concepts will be replicated at the city level. Some clues, what were the free uh, proof of concept that were selected? The first one is called Jagers and is based on the creation of a data visualization software to help decision make makers to detect problems in the transport systems. The second one is called Prontuario du Buzan and is more focused on the operation side the objective is to create an app linked to a platform to collect data and then um, present strategic in the indicators of performance and assist uh, fleet related decision making processes. And the third one is called uptime 
And the idea is to assist decision makers to plan the routes of public transport. How? Through a web software that will also um, integrate all the existing data on the routes, the use of the buses, and will support um, this route suggestion processes uh, in the city of Teresina. So we will let you know what proof of concept will be selected uh, in October to be replicated at the city level. Thank you again for the invitation. Very happy to be with you today. Well, very nice contribution from AFD, Susan. This was the Teresinha project in Brazil that is being developed under the Euroclima program that is running all over Latin America in many sectors. One of them is urban mobility. And they talk about how to link digitalization in uh, improvement of public transport. It's very nice to see the three options that they are opening. We'll need to get more information when all these projects are finished. One is related with data collection, related with the planning, and the other one is to create indicators that will support operation. And of course, the last one is plan road for the transport, also using digitalization for all the three of those projects. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this goes. We really have to get back in touch with uh, Suzanne in October to see how those projects went. Um, but for now, uh, let's focus on the next country presentation. We have now an input from the Philippines. So watch and enjoy.
Many thanks, Philippines. That was a great overview of different measures related to transport in the NDC in Philippines. I must only say, we are short of time, that one comment, GAG contribution of transport in Philippines is above the global average. Global is 13% and Philippines is showing 33%. Road and maritime sector are expected to grow significantly. Very, very interesting. Now, first, we come to the next country presentation. Yeah, the next country presentation, and it is the last presentation of this showtime, correspond to Vietnam. So we will welcome Vietnam and please share the video. đi lại và vận chuyển hàng hóa là nhu cầu thiết yếu của xã hội kinh tế phát triển thu nhập mở bình quân đầu người tăng thì nhu cầu này cũng gia tăng trong bối cảnh các cái phương tiện giao thông vận tải chủ yếu đốt nhiên liệu hóa thạch để tạo động lực thì cái phát thải khí nhà kính cũng tăng lên tuy nhiên thì chúng ta có thể hạn chế cái điều này bằng cách phát triển hệ thống vận tải theo hướng các bằng thấp Trong thời gian qua thì Bộ Giao thông Tải đã phối hợp với Gói Z và World Bank xây dựng kịch bản phát thải khí nhà kính thông thường trong ngành giao thông tải giai đoạn đến 2030 và 3 kịch bản giảm nhẹ phát thải khí nhà kính. Trong đó thì đối với kịch bản do quốc gia tự thực hiện thì ngành giao thông vận tải có thể giảm phát thải khoảng 9% tương đương với 8 triệu tấn CO2 so với kịch bản phát thải khí nhà kính thông thường. Kết quả kiểm kê nhà kính thì cho thấy giao thông vận tải đường bộ là lĩnh vực uh, tiêu thụ của nhiên liệu lớn nhất và phát thải khoảng hơn 80% khí nhà kính trong ngành giao thông vận tải. Do vậy, các cái biện pháp giảm nhẹ phát thải khí nhà kính trong ngành cũng sẽ tập trung cho lĩnh vực này, bao gồm thứ nhất là cải thiện hiệu quả sử dụng uh, năng lượng, thứ hai là chuyển đổi phương thức uh, vận tải uh, hành khách từ sử dụng phương tiện cá nhân sang uh, phương tiện uh, công cộng, Thứ ba là chuyển đổi vận tải hàng hóa từ đường bộ sang đường thủy nội địa và vận tải ven biển. Và thứ tư là chuyển đổi sử dụng nhiên liệu sang sử dụng nhiên liệu sinh học và năng lượng điện. Giai đoạn 2020-2023, Chính phủ Cộng hòa Liên bang Đức tiếp tục hỗ trợ Bộ Giao thông tải thực hiện NDC của Việt Nam thông qua dự án sáng kiến giao thông vận tải trong NDC tại các nước châu Á. Dự án có ý nghĩa rất là quan trọng đối với Bộ Giao thông tải trong thực hiện chức năng quản lý nhà nước về biến đổi khí hậu theo luật bảo vệ trường năm 2020. Mục tiêu của dự án là xây dựng quy định về mức tiêu thụ nhiên liệu đối với xe ô tô con, xe mô tô và xe gắn máy, xây dựng cơ chế chính sách và lộ trình phát triển phương tiện giao thông điện cấp thành phố và cấp quốc gia và đặc biệt là xây dựng cái hệ thống MRV điện tử nhằm định lượng giám sát cái hiệu quả thực hiện các biện pháp giảm phát thải nhiên kính trong giao thông tải. Well, this was a very good example of how to scenario development really helped to identify key focus area, such in this case, road transport, that contributes, eight, contributes 80 percent on GAG emission in transport. Then they decided to take appropriate measure, shift both passenger and freight transport, and improve quality on vehicles. Now we finish the presentation of all the countries, and it is time to Take a look at the poll. In the beginning, we promised you there would be the uh, daily poll or the poll of the day. And uh, to kick it off, we asked you about um, the poll, poll results or about the, the transport mode that you take to get to work or to get wherever you are right now. And if we have a look at it, we see that uh, public transport and cycling are dominant. 
That is interesting. Yeah, there is a winner or two winners at least, public transport and cycling. And then very close or not so close with 20% is walking. And then private car still there. We still use private car, of course, different reasons, support the use of private car, 13.3%. Mm -hmm. No others in this comment, but we can say public transport and walking and, and cycling takes 70 something percent of how people are going now to work. Great. That, well, from a climate change perspective, that is certainly a very, very good result. We are very happy about that. Um, now we want to take a look at the agenda uh, for the rest of the day and have an outlook on that. Can we see the agenda? Otherwise, I know that already many, many, uh, there it is actually, many events already happened in Asia since uh, for you it's um, already a little bit later in the day, we are here still in the morning, but um, you already had a variety of different events and now we are in the Changing Transport Show time. But of course the day is not over for you, we will have, um, right after the Changing Transport Show time, we will have a workshop on uh, future-proof smart city logistics and uh, we will talk about the publication that Daniel mentioned earlier. Uh, earlier this morning already, Future Ahoy. This was done uh, by Agora Verkehrswende together with Ellery Studio, um, who, who cooperated to uh, create this very, very informative and super interesting, beautiful uh, graphic novel on transport turnaround. Uh, so make sure to not miss this launch. And now uh, we have a very, very special guest here on stage, uh, Friede Seelaya. Yeah, we uh, are close in our showtime, but we are not going to do that before talking with Friedel because you will introduce us with the next next workshop, please. Yeah, thank you for having me in the showtime. Um, it's also a premiere for me. I've never been invited to a showtime. <laughs> so um, I am the host of the next event, which is uh, the Urban Freight Workshop, the first workshop of the Transport Week. And the first time also that we have a workshop at the Transport Week, which deals with urban freight. And uh, when my colleague asked me yesterday, um, please, Friedel, give me um, a hashtag on your workshop, I couldn't come up with anything better than urban freight is great, um, but it's only great when it's sustainable, right? Yeah. And that's what we're going to look into uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, in 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, please tune in, uh, be part of the workshop. It's going to be a very interactive exercise and um, I'm looking forward to see you there. One thing I shouldn't miss to mention is that uh, it's going to be uh, a cooperation with ICLE, the International Council on Local Environment environmental initiatives who have co-organized this workshop and are also co-facilitating with me. So I won't do this alone. Great. Thank you very, very much, Friedel. I'm sure we are all very much looking forward to your workshop. Um, and now, last words. We are closing the Changing Transport show time. So that was, this was it for the first time. Thank you very, very much for uh, being with us here today, for bearing with us even to, uh, through technical difficulties. Uh, make sure to check out all contributions, of course also the Albania country presentation and all others in the mobility movies on the platform. And Please make sure to be with us uh, tomorrow again, again at 8 a.m. Berlin time and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much.